In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace just the glass and touch layer on the Apple Watch SE 44mm. Started off the repair by turning off the device and placing it face down on the heat map set to 85 degrees centigrade for the next five to 10 minutes. I will just add that, like I say, this is the SE 44mm. The same technique applies to all Apple Watches up to the Series 6. Now this device has had five minutes on the heat mat, we're going to get some fine pointed tweezers and we're going to take a look at this edge where the glass is already broken here. And I'm going to remove any broken shards such as this one to help get a start on removing the screen. The hardest part about this job is definitely getting the screen off without damaging the OLED display underneath. So you have to take your time, like I say, get any loose shards of glass from underneath or especially around the edges the more damaged these are the easier it is to remove especially when the damage is around the edge like these shards here that's this is the stuff what we like to get out because the curved glass on these makes it awkward to remove now that we've got a good gap in that area there we're going to continue working along using a Dorco blade this time to separate the screen from the chassis. I'm also trying not to damage the gasket as I work my way around as well. I'm sorry if you, if the camera is not too good with this. These watches are quite small and it's difficult to film whilst I'm working on it. When you're using the Dorco blade, only use it on this edge, this edge and this edge. The bottom edge is where the important cable is for the OLED display and you don't want to accidentally touch that with the blade and cause unnecessary damage to the OLED display. You want to be looking at releasing the three edges, then lifting it up from the top of the screen and adding some drops of isopropyl alcohol whilst wiggling the screen from side to side to separate it. I'm also going to get the tweezers again to separate some more of these shards out of the way, which should make it a little bit easier to release it from this bottom edge. It takes a lot of practice to get this right. Now that we've got this screen open, you can see that it opens up from the bottom downwards. And we're just gonna be careful not to open it up too much, but you can sort of stand these up like that. There's like a, a bit of black tape covering up these FPC connectors or ZIF connectors as they are on, the, on these watches rather than FPCs like you get on iPhones. And we're gonna remove some of that tape what protects it on each of the three connectors it's important as well just make sure that you peel it out of the way because i guarantee if you don't when you go to reconnect these cables later i promise you they'll be they'll they'll get in the way and it's annoying so now that that tape's released i'm going to lift up the edge of the ziff connectors one two three so that's like a little hinge what goes underneath and then i'm going to start I'm going to start lifting up the chassis, lifting up the screen cables so that we can, because because they're sort of taped, you see, you see how they're taped to the back of the OLED display? We're going to lift them up, try and stretch them, and then pull them out to release the screen. So we can put the chassis to one side for a little bit later, and we're going to concentrate on removing the glass and digitizer on this display now. These little holes on my um, heat map or sort of little holes where air gets sucked through. So I'm just gonna add some tape to block off a few holes. I'm just gonna leave four holes visible. So I've just got some packaging tape that I'll stick onto the rubber mat to stop air getting sucked through all these holes here. And then I'm gonna place the watch screen just face down like that. And I'll let it warm up for a minute. Now to actually separate the glass, you've got a couple of options here because you've got a few different layers. First, you've got the glass layer. If you wanna remove just the glass on its own, go on top of the digitizer, which we can sort of identify with that copper band around the edge there. But we're gonna go underneath the digitizer. I always find that if you're removing just the glass, you will have touch problems later on down the line, or you might find that the digitizer will separate. So we always, when repairing glass on Apple Watches, replace the digitizer as well. We will have to separate the digitizer connector on the back, so peel off the tape there, and then just get underneath it with some tweezers to separate it. From the back of the display like that 
leaving it just like that. And then you want to choose a corner like this one where the glass is already removed. And I'm going to get started with the watch facing up now that it's nice and hot and the adhesive is nice and soft. You've got a couple of options again here. I like to use the thinnest wire I've got, which is 0 0.035 millimeters. And we're going to get up real close to this watch now. And I'm going to start separating underneath the digitizer layer. Once I've got a start on this, then I'm pretty happy to flip this watch back over now and then turn on the suction, which is going to hold it in place and stop it sliding around whilst I'm cutting this digitizer off. Again, this step takes a lot of practice to make sure you're going in the right layer. So if this is the first time you're trying this repair, I would recommend having a go with a practice screen first. And I don't know how much you can see, but basically I'm going backwards and forwards with the, with the wire. And I'm just sort of slowly cutting through this by pulling it from side to side. If I find that there's a lot of resistance at any point, then I'll sort of stop pulling away and ease off a bit. But it's just about getting that feel. But what I was saying is it's really difficult to explain this, this step, but it just takes a lot of practice to get in the feel right for, for removing the glass and sort of knowing when it's cutting through the right layer and how fast or how hard to pull on it. But you can see as well, because this is sliding about a bit, I don't think I've quite got enough suction on my on my machine. So I'm just pulling it with one hand and holding the screen in place with the other, just for this last bit, look. And then I'll pull both bits together to release it through. And then you can see, looking at the glass, that we have separated it now. Sometimes you'll find that these this will stick a little bit to the, to the OLED still. If you find that, that happens, and just add some isopropyl alcohol into that gap there then grab a piece of like plastic card like plastic filmy stuff and you're just going to go in and separate the glass from the OLED display again use a bit of alcohol if required because this is pretty sticky this one I'm wondering if it's been done before when they're really sticky it sometimes means that the screen has been replaced before but anyway that's the OLED panel and that's the old digitizer. We can see we've removed it in one. Now that that's removed, we can discard the broken glass. And then I'm going to place this back onto the heat mat. It's ideal if the alcohol dries at this point. But now I'm going to get the spinny tool, which is just a, a little electric motor with a button on it and a spindle. And this acts as like your thumb. You could use your finger to rub off the adhesive. This thing does the same thing as just rubbing it off, except it doesn't give you friction burns after you've been doing it all day. So you just place it down on the heat mat. Once it's nice and hot, we're just gonna run it over and you can see it peels off the adhesive. You wanna be really gentle with this because there is a risk that you'll scratch the OLED panel. But now I'll show you sort of close up that all the thick of the adhesive has been, left, been removed now. And then all that remains is just some last little bits. So to remove that, I'm going to use a liquid called D-limonene, which is an industrial degreasing agent. And I've got just a tiny bit of it onto this magic sponge. You can see I'll just gently sort of massage it onto the OLED screen. And what we're going to find is that it's going to remove any of that glue that was left behind. It might be quite difficult to sort of see what's clean and what's not at the moment on the, on the screen. But once I think that I've removed as much of the thick of the adhesive as possible then I'm going to go over it with a clean room wipe and some acetone now and you can see that looks pretty polished that screen now I'd say that looks pretty good let me just pick it up I'm going to swap to wearing some gloves in a minute as well because we don't want to get fingerprints on this you can see that looks pretty shiny and pretty clean moving on now I'm going to take this and put it in the dust free room and I'm going to get the new digitizer out like i said you can put some gloves on at this point because i don't want to get i don't want to touch anything and get my skin grease on it and get it mucky so the digitizer comes it's usually got a plastic film on the front we can take that off whenever but there's also this one's got the the glass layer the digitizer layer which is the touch and then it's got an ochre layer on it as well which is optically clear adhesive and that's the stuff what's going to stick the glass to the screen so first of all I'm going to give this one last clean with the acetone and a fresh 
cleaner and wipe to make sure that it's absolutely spotless. I'll probably wipe it again one more time before we stick it down, but at least now, if it's not got any dust on it, I know that it's ready. Now I'm gonna lift up or use some tweezers to lift the back of the ochre sheet up so that I can peel the rest of it off. Now this is live and it's ready, so we need to work quickly. So I'm gonna get the clean room wipe. One last wipe off of this. Make sure that it goes the right way around. So I'm gonna lift it up, flip it over, make sure it's clean. And then I'm gonna line up. I always hand align watch screens by making sure it's in nicely in line at the top. And then we just sort of drop it down. And then just one touch in the middle and we can see, let me peel this film off. Like it's, it's made contact, it's stuck down now. It's not gonna move around, but it looks terrible. Right, it needs to go into the laminator now. So I'll just peel back this. It's like a adhesive on the back of the flex cable there. Stick that down in line with the rest of the ZIF connectors. And then we'll take this over to the laminator. This is the Okamaster K20 laminating machine. And basically we lift up the lid place the watch screen inside it face up, close it up. So it uses heat and a vacuum to stick the screen down. And once we press start, it's gonna take about three minutes to do everything that it needs to do. So we'll come back in a minute and take a look at the screen. Now that this has finished its process, we can lift up the lid and remove the screen. So we can see looking closely at it that we've still got some bubbles and it's not, in all honesty, it's not a perfect lamination, but that's not a problem. We've got this little machine underneath my laminator and when we open it up, pull out the tray, pop the screen on there, push it back in and seal it up. This has got like a sealed door on it and this uses pressure. So the opposite of the laminator, which uses a vacuum, it uses pressure to push, to force any bubbles out of the screen. Whilst the screen's debubbling, we're gonna take a look at this chassis now. And it's super, super important to make sure that this is really clean because we're gonna seal the watch back up and we need the best po possible seal that we can get. So I'm gonna get the little exacto blade and I'm just gonna begin scraping off any adhesive. We don't wanna be going too hard on this. In fact, it's probably better to use a slightly bluntened exacto blade because there is a little rubber gasket on there. That is replaceable, but it is awkward to replace. It's better off to leave it. If it's not damaged at all, it's better to leave it in place. Just make sure that you don't damage any of the flex cables as always when you're doing that. Once you've scraped as much of the dust out of there as possible, we're gonna get some fine tweezers now. And there is a small gap between the edge of the chassis and that gasket that we're gonna scrape all the dust and grime out of. You can see it starting building up, especially in the corners. Just make sure that it's real nice and clean and all scraped out because you don't want, look at all that dust. You don't want that. You don't want that in between your seal. You really don't want it. Right, once you've got that, we're gonna brush it. Do the brushing trick. These brushes are really good. I'll try and put a link in the description below for most of the tools that I use in this video, as long as there's affiliate links on Amazon because I had a little tantrum about putting links in videos the other day. And yeah, that is what it is, spoilt by one or two. Right, once the heavy of the dirt is removed, we can get some isopropyl alcohol in the little dripper bottle. And we're gonna apply that around all the edges and then give it another brush to make sure that it's real nice, clean and spotless. Can't stress how important this step is. Now that that's clean, we'll let all the alcohol dry whilst we remove the screen from the pressure chamber. I love the satisfying noise of this. So that depressurizes it so that we can open up the door and we can see, look at that. All those bubbles before are gone. They are gone. It's just a little dusty, don't worry. Don't worry, there's no dust on the inside, no marks. This one's a nice, nice lamination. Really happy with that. Let's go and get this fitted onto our watch. So to fit this, We've got one clean chassis. And what I find is easiest is if you lay the screen flat like that, offer up the cables one at a sort of time. It's awkward. It's, there's no easy way of doing this. I sometimes like to do it under the microscope, but I'm not going to today because I'm making a video and the camera's in the way. But you want to get it lined up, get one cable in and give it a little nudge with the tweezers. 
and then keep pushing it in. Make sure that these are open actually. If one of those is, is closed and you're trying to squeeze them all in, it's just not going to work. And if you just keep going backwards and forwards, just a little nudge at a time, eventually they're all going to sit flush so that you can now close the zip connectors like that. If you want to at this point, you can add a little bit of Kapton tape over those connectors just to make sure that they're not going to go anywhere. And now we're looking pretty good. It's a good time to test the screen works. Apologies about all this dust. I think it's from cleaning up the chassis just now. Sometimes you will find that it will not show any image. Let's uh, put it onto the charging dock and then all of a sudden, yes, we've got an Apple logo. Let's clean up some of this dust while it's turning on. And I'll blow out any dust from inside the watch. I'm going to try and be as clean as possible. We've got a working screen and we'll just slide the screen up and down, touching all areas, making sure that it doesn't drop the slider. So this looks like it's a successful job. Now all that remains to do, oh we can see it's charging and making sounds as well, all that remains to do is apply the waterproof adhesive. So now the big reveal, we use something called Permatex Ultra Black Gasket Marker which is oil resistant and it's I think 82180. It comes in a big tube like this, you can see that we've used quite a bit of it. Now obviously you don't want to use this big tube because it's nearly half the size of the watch itself. Instead, it's best decanted into a little syringe like that with one of these purple tips on it. Every time that you use this, if it's dried up, use a fresh tip, it goes without saying. And a little bit goes quite a long way with this. So this like five mil thing, this has probably done two or three watches already. And I like to leave it on, on the charger as well because it just spins around quite easy. And we're gonna just generously apply this to the edge of the watch like that. Make sure that there's no breaks in the glue as well. So like there should be no gaps where you're applying it. See that bit there? That, that's a gap. Don't matter if there's a little bit too much because we can wipe off any excess later. But it's very important that, like I said, there's no gaps. The awkward bit is around the flex cables because obviously the flex cables are in the way. So we'll get as much as we can from this side. Quite easy to leave gaps on that bit, so I'll just make sure that it's all covered nicely. And then we're going to line it up, splodge it on there, clean room wipe, microfiber cloth, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to wipe up any excess, making sure that it doesn't stain on the aluminium housing on this one. Now that that's pushed on like that and secured, I'm going to use these little thumb clamps and just apply quite a bit of pressure with these actually. We need a good strong seal on it. Same on this side. So we've got two on there and that's applying a nice bit of pressure. Just check with your fingernail that it's like even on each side as well. And I'm going to leave this in the clamps now for the next 12 hours until it's set. So according to the manufacturer's instructions it is 24 hours to set this glue so you can leave it in the clamps for 24 hours although it is i've found ready to remove after an hour but just don't expose it to any water within that time frame obviously once you're happy and it has been in there for 12 hours just remove your clamps take your clean room wipe wipe off any excess if you find that there's a lot of excess in that small gap there then you can use a plastic spudger to clean it up that just about completes this video on how to replace the glass on the Apple Watch SE and other models. Thank you for watching and see you next time.